okay, 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 this is, I can't wait for it. And I was asked to see if this stock was going to drop. And I don't normally look at puts um, on different stocks or whatever. I typically just, you know, stay away from if it's just going to drop, I'll let it drop. Um, and I use that as a, a means of finding a trigger to get into a position. Um, however, I do know a combo that works really well um, that I'm pretty familiar with um, back when I traded futures. And I don't know, it kind of piqued my interest in, so I'm going to make a video about it um, and see if this comes to fruition. And so I got lines all over my screen, so I must apologize because that's just how my brain works. Um, and I don't expect you to understand or, or you know what they, what they all mean, but I'm going to try to make sense of it all. So this is IWM iShares Trust Russell's 2000 ETF. And um, so to kind of give you a better picture of what is going on with the stock, it's in a consolidation pattern sitting at a high after a really high peak up. And so if I was to shrink this down, you can see basically bounce off this node and launches itself going up. And before that, it basically did a deep V, dropped down, came up, um, hit the upper, I mean, it rode the upper Bollinger Band here. And it might be better looked at on a weekly chart, make more sense, I think, on the move itself because it's such a big move. And so this here, it hit the upper Bollinger Band here. Let me get an arrow. Where's my arrows? Where's all my stuff? Okay. All right. So we hit the upper Bollinger Band here, and then it misses it here, which is a classic sign that this is going to drop goes into a deep V, hits the bottom Bollinger Band, rides the bottom Bollinger Band down, works its way back inside, bounces up, comes in, hits the bottom Bollinger Band again, three times, one, two, three, boom, shoots up, hits the top Bollinger Band, doesn't pass the previous high over here, so that would be three, four, this was two down here, that's one over there. So one, two, three, four, drops down, deep dive for five and runs back up, works its way back in. Instead of going down this time to hit the bottom Bollinger Band again, like it did over here, which was on three, four. This is five, which is the spring. It launches it up and then it does this bounce to go up, hits the upper Bollinger Band here, which I find interesting that it Okay, it did. Okay. Hits the upper Bollinger Band here, comes back down, creates the other handle of the cup right there, which matches the handle of the cup over here. And, well, technically it's a little, this is a little high, um, but it does it. Whatever. Boom, hits there, bounces up, and launches itself. So that's one move going out of a deep V. What we're interested in is this move right here going into the deep V. And so, so look how it hits here, doesn't touch there, drops down, hits the bottom Bollinger Band, rides it down, consolidates it down here, crosses back up across the middle up to the top, hits the bottom Bollinger Band again though. So there's two touches to the bottom. Um, I mean, of course there's more there, but just saying that it gaps away from it, comes back to it, touches it, hits it three times, bounces back up, doesn't pass the high, which is three, four. Boom, three, four. And then once it completes uh, three, four by hitting this upper Bollinger Band and riding up, not passing the high of the one there, it drops for five and rides the bottom Bollinger Band down. Now, it doesn't have to be as drastic on five to drop down like this. I mean, five could just be stopped right here and just taken off and gone long. But they... I don't know. Uh, they still got a high out of it. Um, normally, if it drops this low, it's, it's kind of like mutes this move, but they, they ran it up for, I mean, basically what it was is you push down on the market to get back out of the market. Um, 
this is all a test right here. And so based on what they've seen is if they push down on the market here, they get about 100% back out of the market. Push back here, 100% back out of the market. Push here, 100% back out of the market. Well, 80%. Push here, 100%. Push here, 200%. Once you get that, you push down, you get double your efforts back out of the market on this move right here. This is the change of character. And so this is important. This is the change of character. If you looked at every single one of these, they were all less than 100 or at 100% of return on these moves. But once you got everybody on the same side of the fence, push down on the market, get double the effort or the results back out of it. Boom, boom. You know? So now it's set. The trap is set. It's ready. And so they push hard on this market right here because they've got the market primed to do what they want. They're getting double the results back out of what they're doing. So they push hard deep into liquidity, breaking all these stop losses. And everybody, they broke all those stop losses, lose all their shares. And they gobble them all up, soak them all up on these candles right here. Now that they soaked up almost 99% of the float, the last 1% of the float is left out there for retail to fight over. Well, retail just lost all their shares. They got scared to death because of this drop. And then all of a sudden, they start seeing it turning around. And then they, they jump in out of FOMO. And then they start pushing this thing up. They're fighting over their shares, creating this demand. And then whenever it gets to a certain point where it looks like retail is starting to fizzle out, they push down on it. They get double the result back out of it. Push down on it. Get double the result back out of it. Push down on it. Get double the result out of it. Push down on it again. Get quadruple the result out of it. You know. And so at this point, as long as they keep pushing down and they're getting more than double out of it, back out of it, they're going to keep doing that and let it go up. And so that's what happened here is they had retail like primed. They had pre retail like just begging, yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Please, please take me out of my contracts. I'll jump back in. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and this is the result. And so that is the full move. And so that brings us to now, like where we're at right now. And I've got lines everywhere. I don't even want to look at it like that. Um, ah, it's a mess. All right. So if we take the same philosophy, ideology, this was one on the weekly. One on the weekly here. Misses it here. But hasn't come down for two yet. So it needs to drop down for two. And then if it does drop down for two, then this would be the deep V, the first deep V, which could be like right here where these lines cross. I mean, it doesn't have to be as drastic as the other one. So, you know, they're pushing, they get pushing, they get less than half the result back. Pushing, basically double the result maybe there pushing right now it hasn't been so, uh, shown yet so it's a mixed bag of pushing but there's no dip into liquidity down here yet so it has to come down before it can go up anyways i mean it can go up a little bit you know it's not going to break this structure high or this high right here um, it's going to go up and then it's going to come back down and dip into liquidity before it runs back up again so that's one way to look at it. If you look at it from Wyckoff point of view, this has to dip, do the major sign of weakness, and then do an up thrust after distribution, final dip into liquidity, which is the spring, and boom, it goes up. So uh, major sign of weakness would be two, up thrust after distribution, and then comes back down, final dip into liquidity, which would be five, the spring. So the up thrust after distribution would be three, four, and so that's what I have up here is three, four. And then it would come back down again, do the final dip in the liquidity, which would stop slightly above this usually. It can go a little bit deeper. Boom, it goes higher. And just like this last five over here where it went really deep, I mean, it could do that too. So it, it just really depends on how they how they push this. If, I, if you see this thing drop dramatically, you know, um, then... You know, they've got the market primed. So I, I would look at the, the distance between this guy right here and here 
and then result of this right here. This needs to come up and touch 3, 4 on the daily. So on the daily, this was the weekly we're looking at right now, but on the daily, it's already gone through a whole curve and then it's waiting to go up to touch the top Bollinger Band here at 3, 4, then do a dip and you know, drop down to 5, which would be in the exact same place as where 2 is here, and then uh, launch to go for a new high. So it on the daily, it has to come up and touch up here, the top Bollinger Band, then it has to drop down and touch the bottom Bollinger Band, then it has to go you know, up. And so it kind of coincides with the weekly, except for the weekly just wants to go down. Um, but the, the weekly we can be put off by the daily. The daily can just come up here and touch this real quick and then drop. And then, you know, then it's solidifying two and five, two for the weekly and five for the, the daily. I know that's a lot to take in, but um, so I've got that move written out right here. And I know it's all all over the place on top of each other and everything because I'm looking at it from a different time frame. So let me switch this back to a daily. Okay, so now when you look at this on the daily, there's a combo that kind of sums up all that when you go into consolidation at the top. And, and then there's an easier way to even look at it from there too as well. And of course, I'm making it super hard to look at. <laughs> um, but you have you have it run up here, um, and it hits a high, drops down to a low, comes back to a high, drops down to a low again, and then it pops up. So let's take it from this one here. So from high to low, back to high, drops down. So up, down, up. Sounds like a code to a video game. Up, down, up, drops down again, consolidates sideways on the bottom half of this Bollinger Band right here, whereas the other ones just kind of like cross over really. They do consolidate, you know, in the middle here, but it's more like the consolidation isn't like strictly on the bottom half. It kind of is moving across this line as it's doing it. And so the same way here, it's cross, growing across this line, consolidating diagonally down, consolidating diagonally up, consolidating diagonally down again, now consolidating sideways. And so now we go sideways, strictly under the bottom half of this Bollinger Band right here. And then as it goes across sideways, you count the candles as it goes up to the top here to the mean. One, two, three, four, five, six, and you have this indecision right here. And then what comes after the indecision, I don't know why it's doing that, I'm sorry. What you have after the indecision is the emotional one, the one that pops. It goes, it's the, it's different on, on different time frames, or it could be stagnated based off of you know um, indecisions or whatever. Um, but the six candle plus over six, seven, eight in that area, it's always the one that goes for a high, and so you'll see like this one like a push before the pull. So this one goes down, if they push down, and then they're hoping to get double the effort back out of this candle going up. And so if that's the case, you know, if I was to measure this, there's one candle, is exactly the same height as that blue candle. They're hoping the next one goes up there like that. And guess what happens if that next one goes up there like that? Well, it completes 3-4 on the daily. And if it completes 3-4 on the daily, they can turn around and drop right there and come down and touch at 196, where all these lines cross down here for the weekly and for the daily to complete stage 2 for the weekly, stage 5 for the daily. And then that means that's creating a deep V. And if that's creating the deep V, they can come back up and then run for a new high after that. So you have one window of opportunity. One. If IWM price action continues to move up today, hits 3.4, tops out at 229.96, 2.30 area, it might even print a couple candles going diagonally up it. But as soon as it's done printing candles going up that Bollinger Band line, it's going to turn around and nosedive straight down. And then it's going to come down and, and solidify two for the weekly and five for the daily, which is going to be in a 196 area. Um, and once, uh, and that's, that's it. That's, that's your one shot. If it goes, you know, 
you got to be patient though, and you got to wait for it to finish printing three, four going up that Bollinger Band. I showed you on the last one what it could look like. It could just be one. It could just be one candle, and it could be done, and then turn around and come straight down. Or it could print several candles riding that Bollinger Band, like this right here. Here's three, four right here. It hits it one time here. Grab this arrow. It hits it one time here. And then it prints another candle and another candle, and then it prints another candle, but it, that candle doesn't touch the Bollinger Band. It's red. It's not touching the Bollinger Band. It's moving away from it. It's going to drop from there. If, if this doesn't connect to that upper Bollinger Band right there, and it finishes the candle without it connected, it's most likely going to drop and go down from there um, on this move. And so that's what we're looking for right here is the same kind of idea. Is either print one candle and then drop, or it prints several candles riding the upper Bollinger Band at an angle going up and then drops. And one of them just doesn't touch and then it just drops. Um, so I know this is a lot of lines. I know it's super confusing looking, um, and I'm sorry, but it's the only way that you can I can like actually get it all out and and make it make sense to me, so I can explain it to you on what should happen. So hopefully that helps. Um, I might can't wait for it. If you like more of these combos, more of these moves and everything like that, these very price action heavy technical moves, um, I've spent nine months looking at price action, analyzing combos like this, um, moves that predict other moves uh, for 12 to 14 hours a day, nine months straight. Um, it's all I ever did. And um, so I enjoy doing this stuff so if you've got a question like this and you want to know whether or not you think the stock is going to go up or down just ask put it in the comments below please if you like more of this stuff like this is like really deep technical like combo analyzing moves that no one's really doing put it, please follow subscribe i'd love to do it you just let me know all right i can't wait for it i'll see you on the next one